here they are, ready for the final game in the semifinals. This one will decide who goes to the final. It's going to be Mamadiarov or it's going to be Hikaru Nakamura. Hikaru Nakamura with a draw will be in the final. Mamadiarov, he has to win with the white pieces. And five minutes on the clock. And here we are. Here we are, and it's all about speed. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious. <laughs> Pieces are going to fly towards the end of this game for sure. But meanwhile, Mamadjarov taking a slower approach. This is a very common tactic in Armageddon chess. You just keep as many pieces on the board and hope that your extra minute will pay off towards the end because winning on the t winning on time, winning on the clock is just as viable as winning on position. And slow start, one set of pawns been exchanged, both sides castling. What do you think, Ivanka? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I do approve of this strategy. I mean, I've seen it done countless of times and uh, it was very effective. You just get a position, preferably one with an end game, which, you know, you can maneuver, you can play a lot, a lot of moves and it will all come down to the clock. And uh, But we do know that Hikaru is a beast with the clock, with the mouse and he's fantastic with pre-moves. And uh, Shakriya, perhaps not as strong there. Yeah, he did say, Shakriya, just in the last few months, he has come back to online chess after several years away. He's not as experienced with this thing, with the mouse, and it's all about mouse skills later on. If it gets down to one minute each, Nakamura will win mm -hmm. if the position is balanced on the board. But right now, White uh, Mamadjarov, he's actually increased his time advantage. Look at the clock, one minute and 20 seconds up on the clock. And um, White now has the option of jumping into the centre with his knight. He takes it. Um, Nakamura's bishops look good, but the rest of Black's position, a bit suspect, and he does have to retreat with his knight. Mm -hmm. It looks like a great position on the board and the clock for Mamadjarov so far. Yeah, I agree with you there, David. Um, I think this is really, really nice, especially because Hikaru has been forced to sound the retreat and now well okay it's very very logical play by Mamajarov offering to trade of pieces and of course you can see that Hikaru actually keeps the bishop on I mean was that a wise choice to keep the bishops I'm... or would it be simplifying the position just easier to handle especially with the time deficit yeah I'm very surprised by Nakamura dropping back with the black bishop there that black bishop that has just moved is blocked in by his own pawns it's a bad piece maybe he could have taken it off and tried to survive the reason white is better here is because white has a dominant knight in the center of the board anchored by a pawn with that last move, White is preparing to line up both of his rooks on an open line. On Okay, also he breaks the pin. That knight was previously paralysed. It couldn't move because that black bishop was attacking things. Now that knight heading into uh, more promising squares. And Nakamura, he's just trying to swap things off. He's playing ultra-solid defensive mm -hmm. mode right now. But he had the chance to swap things off and uh, he, re he refused to do that. But now he's desperately trying to do that. But I mean, I'm just looking at the clock situation. Well, the time difference has narrowed and uh, Shakriel has to take a decision quickly because otherwise his position will be nothing home to write about. Because remember, Hikaru has draw odds. The game must finish in a win for Shakriel Mamajarov if he is to go through to the final. And I really don't like what has happened for Mamadjarov over the last couple of moves. White's knight, the pride and joy of his position, the most beautiful piece in White's, uh, in White's army. It's just been traded off. Black has been able to swap that piece. And now look at the clock situation as well. It's about to level itself out. And uh, White, not only has he been forced to trade his best piece, no more time advantage. Nakamura showing why he is regarded mm -hmm. as a speed demon. And, okay, uh, and now retreating the queen. That looks like the wrong direction for White. Yeah, and completely the wrong direction. And uh, things are certainly going wrong for Mamadjarov. Okay, he retreats his bishop. Sorry, he, he attacks the pawn a bishop and uh, the bishop retreats. And now he's being forced to make a defensive move on the left in order to blunt the power of the black light square bishop. But okay, Hikaru is in his element. These moves are natural. You know, he, now he's opening up a line and looking at the clock situation while well, Hikaru is still lower on the clock. And that's something that, that Shakriya can actually play on. But okay, Hikaru is winning a pawn. Uh, Black has just won a central pawn with his knight. Nakamura is in full control and uh, it did take him a bit of time, but he's a pawn up, not that much lower on the clock anymore. Only a few seconds down. This is full retreat mode for Mamadyarov. He's messed around too much with his knight, too much with it, that rook there. Pawn up for Nakamura. This one is, it's getting close already. It's completely winning for Black, the position. Yeah, it's completely slipped through his fingers. And, uh, okay, well... 
Of course, the clock is definitely going to be something that Mamadjarov can hope for. So I'm, I'm expecting him just to make natural moves. He just has to keep... Uh, now he has to go into hustle mode. By hustle mode, I mean start pushing the black pieces back. Um, can he do this in a safe way? It's Probably not easy. Not. Blacks, Brooks, both of them were targeting White's bishop. That White bishop had to be defended. Mamadjarov stepped forward with his rook. The only thing I can see going wrong for Nakamura is the fact that the Black King is slightly exposed. Some pawns have, have moved in front of it, and White had a threat there. Black's rook stepping back, meanwhile. Um, nice, uh, nice blitz type of move. You protect all your pieces, that rook stepping back mm -hmm. to a very solid square. And uh, again, the time difference keeps narrowing. Now, Mamadjarov has just under two minutes, but so has Hikaru. OK, well, this is I like. I like this move. You know, you're going to lose anyway. Your position is worse on the board, so why not just throw everything into the air? And, uh, OK, the position is livening up. Yeah, he we sacrificed should mention, a piece. Yeah, White oh. sacrificed a piece, and that was what you liked, Ivanka. And now, OK, White did get two pawns for the piece, and now he's going towards the Black King. Things are slowly starting to turn. Black's King not entirely safe, White's Rook super active, and that's what you need to do. You need to take risks. You need to make your opponent's position hard to play. It doesn't matter about the objective evaluation right now. Black's King looks nice and safe, protected by the Bishop, but suddenly, look at the dark square diagonal towards the Black King. White needs to get his Queen onto that diagonal, and it's almost checkmate. Um, Nakamura still in control, still doing fine, but suddenly counter chances for Mamadjarov. Yeah, and uh, I agree. You know, I actually quite like uh, Mamadjarov's position now, especially lots of practical chances. I really like this philosophy, overprotect your weaknesses. And now is it the time to go forward? You have it, to try. Yes, you absolutely. How are you going to do it? Are you going to do it with pawns or are you going to perhaps do it with pieces? I like okay. what he's done. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. So now the white rook on the right is getting ready to manoeuvre itself to attack the queen. And there is a now a mouse hole for the white queen to escape to if she is attacked. Yeah, and white does step forward with his queen there. Mamadyarov, he has upped the pace over the last dozen moves. And look at the kings. White's king is safer than black's king temporarily at least, um, and often that is the deciding factor when it comes down to these mad time scrambles when both sides have 30 seconds left on the clock. Meanwhile, though, Nak Nakamura bringing his rook across, threatening to drop that rook down and attack the white queen. And uh, Yeah, but, but Mama Jarv says no way. And look how he's coordinating all his pieces. So far, there is no active threats, and now the advance finally happens. Hikaru under a lot of danger. OK, but... It's well, a big, big mistake blunder. by Mamajarov. He didn't realise that Black's knight was about to jump forward, attacking the white queen and threatening a fork. White had to give up a rook. So now white is down a whole rook for only three pawns. It's still not game over. Still some chances because Black's king is a bit open. But Nakamura, all he needs to do is trade rooks and trade queens and the game is over. Mamajarov, he has to hope he gets a trick in to checkmate the Black king or play for time. Those are the only remaining hopes. Black is completely winning in position right now. Mm -hmm. And, OK, White pushing pawns. This is desperation from Mamadjarov. Look at his facial expressions. He knows he's losing, um, but it's just about setting that final trap. And he's continuing to advance his pawns. Uh, Black's bishop did grab a pawn there, but you couldn't take it because White's bishop was attacked. And Nakamura leaning back. He knows he's winning. That's his body language when he's confident. He's getting the queens off the board. He's got 40 seconds. That's enough time to win with an extra rook. Mamadjarov about to resign. There we go. Nakamura wins. Wow. We're going to have a final with Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. For the first time, the American is in a final in the Meltwater Champions Chess Tour.